Welcome to this module on best practices in academic and workplace communication. In this module, we are going to focus on issues related to ethnicity, age and disability and how the problems related to inequality, diversity and discrimination related to these three issues uh, should be addressed in our technical communication. Now, let me briefly talk about the need for incorporating these issues into our technical communication that is why and how we should be sensitive to issues of race, ethnicity and national origin as well as age and disability in our technical communication. So, we all know that we live in a and work in a very globalized world in and we all work in globalized workplaces either in real terms or in virtual terms and therefore, because we work in these globalized workplaces, the workplace itself has become more diverse in terms of the background of people, the cultural, the ethnic, the racial, the national background of different people working in the same place. So, this has enhanced the need for sensitivities in global workplaces and many large Indian and multinational organizations in fact conduct training programs to make people sensitive to work in these kinds of globalized workplaces, so that there is less friction and more uh, professional interaction, which enhances the overall efficiency and effectivity of the workplace. And further, these days all professional bodies and academic forums or journals require that we adhere to these diversity norms in our technical communication. One can also see in more recent editions of many language dictionaries that they provide a list of offensive terms, which were used for a very long time, but which are considered to be insensitive and offensive and therefore, are not to be used in all kinds of professional communication. Generally, it is now agreed and there is a lot of research including those by Nobel Prize winning economists such as Gary Baker that diversity is good for business. That is diversity in the workplace is good for business because the more diverse the employees are, the more ideas that emerge in the workplace, the more innovation that takes place. So, this is one key reason apart from the need to be politically correct to ensure that we are sensitive to issues of race, ethnicity and national origin in our formal and informal communication in the workplace. A general set of guidelines for you would be as follows. We should always be aware that styles and preferences for words referring to different ethnic and racial groups change over a period of time and as I will show a little later, we need to find out what these are and incorporate them into our communication. Secondly, in graphics, photographs, examples and all kinds of communication, we should show people from different backgrounds, so that everybody feels included when you are communicating to them. Some examples are given here. On the left hand side, you have certain terms which have been used in the past, but are considered offensive or insulting or hurting today. So, terms like Negro in fact is banned in many countries in the world. Terms like aborigines have been used for a very long time in the history of human beings. So, what you see on the right side are two strategies to ensure that we are more sensitive. Number one, we use a terminology that refers not to skin color, but to people's origin. So, African American or Afro American is generally preferred, because these refer to the national, cultural, regional origin of people instead of referring to the skin color. Secondly, you can see that inserting the word people after the reference to the cultural, ethnic, regional background of a community, it is denoted to give respect to people. So, saying native people, aboriginal people, indigenous people, tribal people, this connotes respect for other groups instead of just pluralizing an entire community by using words such as aborigines and tribals. One should in general avoid referring to people by their community unless this is relevant, because the kind of examples that are given at the bottom are best avoided. This is an advice that we give, because it needlessly 
brings in the person's cultural background even though we may think that we do not mean offense or we may assume that we are actually complimenting a particular person. But these terms they refer to certain stereotypes when we are talking about people from different backgrounds and while it may complement one particular individual, it may be derogatory to an entire community to be referred to either as an intellectual or an entrepreneur or merely being referred to by your caste or religion when this is not relevant to refer to human beings work and their achievements and abilities. In the case of India, the term Dalit is something that people themselves prefer for what has been called as untouchable and that term can be used in our communication. We can also use a constitutional term such as scheduled caste or scheduled tribe. A general piece of advice here is that one should avoid reducing any people or any community to abbreviations. In written communication, one can uh, use abbreviations after first giving the expansion in subsequent usages, but in spoken communication, one should as far as possible avoid reducing anybody to their abbreviations. As the example below shows, it is referring to the Yanomama Indians as a tribal population. So, as it was mentioned in the previous slide, using the term population or people after referring to a community denotes a certain amount of respect for them. In this example, we show further instances of insensitivity. So, the term Bimaru uh, was coined some decades ago by some scholars to refer to Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan and Uttar Pradesh. So, such terms are best avoided because it stereotypes entire uh, uh, states, regions, communities and people and does not recognize the individual abilities and communities, it does not recognize the structural reasons for the problems in certain kinds of states. Likewise, a term like paraya, which was a derogatory term to refer to untouchables earlier is best avoided even when the reference here in the second example is not to caste, because people from those backgrounds may feel offended by the use of such terms. So, they are best avoided, alternative terms should be sought out. It is also desirable that from the point of view of clarity and avoiding any kind of vagueness or ambiguity, we avoid excessive generalizations about community. So, terms like Asian or Asian American encompass a very large number of nations, regions, ethnic groups, cultures and so on. So, if you look at the literature on Asian crisis in economics for example, it was primarily an East Asian crisis. So, countries in other parts of the of Asia which dealt with this crisis very well and which ensured that the crisis did not spread to their economies felt quite insulted by the very large number of research output which used the term Asian crisis, because it over generalizes to an entire continent based on the experience of a few countries. So, from perspective of being scientifically or technically correct also, paying attention to ethnicity, culture, national origin is very important. It also helps to be to avoid policy blindness, because uh, as in the example of green revolution, green revolution was a technological intervention to enhance agricultural productivity only in some parts of India, which offered a favorable environment to those uh, regions. So, by using terms such as Indian agriculture, one is blind to the diversity of situations of Indian agriculture and therefore, one may be prevented from looking for alternative diverse technological solutions to the problem of Indian agriculture. So, over generalization in referring to regions, people, continents, nations and so on is to be avoided. The second issue of diversity that we seek to address in this module is age, the problem of ageism. So, we live in a world today where the concept of aging is changing, more people are living longer and more active lives. So, we need to accept and acknowledge that older people are human beings and both in formal and informal communication avoid reinforcing any stereotypes in society based on age. So, one should absolutely avoid using terms like decrepit and senile, like in the case of gender or ethnic origin or cultural origin, avoid mentioning 
avoid referring to age unless it is relevant. Similarly, like in the case of people from different backgrounds, adding the word people or persons after referring to a person who is older or prefixing references to the elderly with the definite article the, these connote respect for people of a certain age. So, instead of saying elderly, we say the elderly or the aged or the older person. So, these are more appropriate ways of referring to people who are senior citizens of this country or of the world. These are a few examples of articles and we give examples of both uh, best practices as well as terms which are not to be used. So, you can see in the first example, the reference is, is to elderly people that is we are fixing the word people to elderly which denotes respect. In the second example, we are prefixing the definite article to elderly, the elderly that denotes respect. In the third example also, we are talking about the elderly. So, these are the appropriate ways of referring to people who are older. Thirdly, in this module, we are referring to people of with different kinds of disabilities. A fundamental guideline which all of us have to follow is to avoid depersonalization of persons with disabilities. That is, using terms such as physically disabled, physically handicapped are to be completely avoided because they place the disability before the person, they emphasize the disability rather than the person. So, in today's modern world where technologies have helped people with disability to lead much more fulfilling lives, it is very important that we give importance or we emphasize the person rather than the disability. So, we should use person with a disability rather than disabled or a handicapped person because we believe a person is not a condition, a disability is a condition. So, here in these examples, the first two are the wrong ways to refer to people with disabilities. So, one should avoid mentally handicapped because the person is coming after the disability. In the second example also, you can see the person or people are coming after disability. The correct way is in the IEEE workshop uh, proceedings as you can see the last example where people with disability is used in this particular article. Likewise, the first two examples in this slide are to be avoided because the person is coming after the disability. In the final example, you can see there is a reference to children with autism. So, autism is a health issue. So, children should come first and autism should be referred to later. So, these are the different kind of best and worst practices that we should be aware of in our communication as far as gender, age and disability are concerned uh, when it comes to scientific communication. Just as we all have different kinds of checklists for ourselves uh, while we communicate, so each of you must be having some kind of a checklist when you prepare a report, when you prepare a presentation and so on. So, I suggest that each of you also prepare a checklist to see if you are gender savvy and culturally sensitive in all of your presentations and see that you avoid worst practices and adhere to best practices. This is the end of the presentation. Thank you.